my name's uh, John Tizik, and I am um, seventh degree black belt in Taekwondo at TST UK. I had an interest in martial arts when I was young from watching uh, programs on the telly. <coughs> there used to be a series called Kung Fu. Um, when I was probably five or six years old, really wanted to get involved in martial arts. Didn't really know much about any martial art in particular, so my parents just took me to a martial arts class that was at my school where I used to go in Finham. And the martial art at the time was, that I took up was Aikido, which um, for anybody who doesn't know much about martial arts and Aikido, it was more about grabbing hold of people, putting uh, locks and things like that on rather than doing kicking and punching. So I wanted to do the kicking and punching and make it uh, look really flashy like the stuff that there was on the TV films at the time. <clears throat> so after a couple of years of doing Aikido, I, I got a little bit bored of uh, what we were doing there, so I gave it up and it was a friend of mine that was at school that did uh, Shotokan Karate at the time and that involved kicking and punching. So that, I then moved on to do Shotokan Karate and I did that for probably two or three years. So in the Aikido I, I took a few belts. In uh, Shotokan Karate I went right up to one belt before black belt and then I, was, I got to about 15 or 16 years doing my exams at school and uh, needed a lot of time and dedication to do my black belt in karate so eventually I gave it up <coughs> which I always look back on now and feel a little bit disappointed because got so far and then ended up quitting right at the end but I had lots of other stuff going on wanted to play football go out with my friends so I ended up quitting uh, karate it's about 16 and then I was 19 years old and we used to go into the city centre a lot in the evening, go out with my mates, and there's a lot of violence and trouble going on at the time, so we thought we'd better take up some kind of um, self-defence. And right behind where I used to live, there was a, another martial arts class, which happened to be Taekwondo. So me and a group of friends went along, and because of the experience I'd had in karate and Aikido, I pretty much picked, picked it up pretty well straight from the beginning so it was more of the reason I chose Taekwondo was because the school was close to where I lived really I think any martial art at that time would have caught my eye. Yeah I chose Taekwondo because uh, a, um, I started as uh, my martial arts journey started in karate in Japan and uh, back in early 90s this is before Tekken <laughs> uh, there was another computer game which had a like fighting theme, like a Street Fighter, which, and then one of the characters in that was a Taekwondo fighter, and I just uh, the karate I did was a traditional karate, and it didn't have a lot of kicks, and then I grew up watching Jackie Chan films, and then seeing that um, Taekwondo character in the fighting movie, uh, fighting game, gave me uh, an idea of oh Taekwondo must be really cool and exciting and learn lots of kicks, and that's where. When I had the opportunity to switch, I, I picked Taekwondo. So about 28 years now, so I think um, I was trying to find some of my <coughs> early certificates, which I, I can no longer find, I must have them somewhere, but I found my earliest gold medal and it was 1996, so I think I must have started about 1994, 1995. So I started karate um, back in 1992, so I was uh, 11. And then um, I went up to brown belt, which is uh, equivalent to red belt. It's the one before black belt in karate. And then um, I moved to England back in 96, and then uh, I had to pause for two years because there was nothing available and then uh, luckily one of my friends uh, and his father ran a taekwondo club so I started training with them from 1998 and then up to 2000 and then I had another four year gap when I went to uni uh, to do my bachelor's when I went to do my master's the university I went um, had a taekwondo club and that's when I picked it up again but now continuously uh, 16 years in uh, ITF Taekwondo. Well it was a nice area we lived in I think that was part of the problem because we lived uh, in Finham in Coventry it's a really nice area and the, but we had uh, used to live on the, uh, the longest cul-de-sac it was in uh, it used to be in the world but I think it's since been passed by but it was about half a mile long and a dead end at the end and we lived at the bottom but there was probably a group of 
10, 12 lads, all roughly the same age. We used to hang around and do everything together. So when we were old enough and started heading off into town, we were a little bit sheltered maybe from you know too much of what was going on outside of our area. And you see lots of rough stuff going on and people getting beat up in town. And, and really, other than what we did ourselves in our local area, we didn't really have much experience about that sort of thing. So that's why we decided to take up a martial art so that we knew how to protect ourselves should anybody uh, try and attack us. It's pretty standard. I, I pl played other sports. So um, in, uh, back in Japan, I was playing rugby and basketball. They were my main passion, uh, particularly basketball. But then, um, yeah, so that was very team orientated. So my mindset was more to do with uh, pay playing team sports and my day and week revolved around being for the team rather than doing something for myself, if that makes sense. So, yeah, that, that was my uh, time before Taekwondo. Well, the first competition at the, the school that I was at with my friends, uh, we got pushed into competition straight away. And because we were like 19-year-old lads and we just wanted to do a bit of sparring, basically, we were white belts and we, they took us to, drove us on a minibus to Cornwall, Farmouth in Cornwall it was, and no white belts were supposed to enter the competition so they gave us yellow belts and uh, chucked us in to have a go. <laughs> so we did the competitions pretty much from a couple of weeks of training, but um, serious competition where I used to do it regularly. It was probably a good year and a half into my training when I first started competing seriously. My first competition, yes, uh, that was uh, about 1993, uh, back in Japan. Uh, that was in uh, karate, and I didn't do very well my first <laughs> first time ever. But uh, yeah, I still vividly remember. Uh, with Taekwondo, there was not really any more roadblocks. The only slight hiccup there was along the way was I. I used to train Taekwondo for about three years and I got to, to do my first degree black belt, which I failed at the first attempt. So it took me two, two attempts to do my black belt grading. And not long after I'd passed, the instructor that was uh, teaching at the school, which we all got on well and we all enjoyed the classes, he left and the numbers of the classes really died down. We used to have like regular adult classes of 20-odd 20, 20 people and it went down to about three or four people. So in the end, the, the, the guy that took over running the class, he stopped the classes and there was about three of us left that really wanted to continue. So we looked around for other schools that were local and there was nothing really at the time. So I went back to doing Shotokan Karate for about two or three months <clears throat> and then a phone call from one of the other lads that had been at my previous club who had found another Taekwondo club. He said that he'd found a, a good school, so we went along and picked back up from where we left off. So we did have, I don't know, maybe two or three months of a break in between on training, but I continued it, but just went back to karate for a little bit. Roadblocks, uh, yeah, I had a massive roadblock. Uh, two, uh, one was uh, I was uh, diagnosed with a uh, rheumatoid arthritis, but it's uh, basically your immune system attacks your own joints. So my, uh, I was particularly affected on my uh, wrists, uh, fists, knees and uh, ankles. So I was, uh, I couldn't do anything for good a few months until I was diagnosed and then I was prescribed uh, uh, medication and then that's when I uh, started subsiding and started controlling the symptoms. But um, yeah, my doctor told me you should keep moving and then so I am <laughs> and that was the first one when I was 27 and then uh, the second one, pretty bad one, was uh, when I did my uh, last grading which was back in, uh, uh, was it 2016, 2015, um, in the middle of my uh, black belt grading, my back went, <laughs> I was on the floor. <laughs> And then after that, um, yeah, my lower back uh, has been suffering a bit, but managing. Personally not. Usually within Taekwondo that you see a lot of people of a certain age where they need hip replacements or knee replacements because they're putting their legs in positions that probably are not too natural. But I think nowadays the way that, um, you know, there's a lot of scientific 
facts about how you should be stretching and training. And back in the days when a lot of people started training, we used to literally force people's legs open just to become more flexible. We used to sit in certain stretches and people would stand on your legs to, to make you more flexible. But that sort of thing doesn't happen anymore. So I'd hope that maybe the, the long-term injuries like hips and knees are a sort of a thing of the past. Luckily for me, worst injuries I've had, broken ribs, broken nose, broken knuckles, small little bones that didn't really stop me from doing too much, but nothing major, touch wood, yeah. Yeah, that's the thing. Uh, taekwondo is probably the one of, if not the most modern martial art. I mean, it's based on uh, other martial arts. Uh, General Che is the founder of ta uh, taekwondo. He was a, I think he's a third degree Dan Black Belt in Shotokan Karate, so that's where I started as well. So a lot of Taekwondo is very similar to Shotokan Karate, and it's mixed, it's mixed in with a few other <coughs> martial arts as well, like Taekwondo, which is foot fighting. But it is a very modern martial art, and it was, it was still really changing and progressing uh, right up to General Choi's death. So even, even though it was, it is fairly recent, it was even more recent that it finally found its uh, what we see today as Taekwondo. So APTI is an association, so within Taekwondo there's, there's uh, two main organisations, there's the WTF which is World Taekwondo which now just call themselves WT and then there's ITF which is International Taekwondo Federation. So they're two different styles of uh, a martial art. Uh, the best way I can describe the difference without going into too much detail is a bit like rugby union and rugby league, similar things but different in, uh, in the, the, the rules and the way that things run. So underneath the ITF, which is what we've always been a part of, our style of Taekwondo, there's lots of different organisations that teach it and uh, there's groups such as Puma and our group now is TST UK, ITF Union, hundreds and hundreds of groups and the uh, APTI at the time that we did the World Championships uh, it stood for Association of Professional Taekwondo Instructors. Well, after I'd, I'd left the, my original school and joined this other school, there was a period of about, uh, I'd say probably seven or eight years where I didn't really compete that much because the, the new school that we'd gone to wasn't so much of a competition school, but it was a, it was a good school within itself, really big classes. So I didn't really compete for a big period of time. And then uh, when I got up to about, I think I was a third degree black belt, we decided to leave with a few of the few of the guys, and we set up our own <coughs> martial arts club, and we joined a different association. And because we were new and nobody had really heard about who we were, what we were, we we decided it was a good idea to try and uh, network and put ourselves around a lot. So we used to try and hit as many national competitions as we could. So we really got ourselves well known by going out and competing. And myself and a lot of my students got national um, championships, gold medals, silver medals, bronze medals. And we were we were doing every single competition we possibly could. Um, one of the groups that we decided to join uh, was heading off to world championships. So it was just natural for us to to put a team together and to compete as individuals because we were just literally doing every competition that we could at that time. It's the uh, the build up of all the practicing you are doing with your teammates and getting the uh, techniques to perfection and all the timing etc is quite it takes a lot of effort but it's a lot of fun as well and then on the day you know you really gather with your teammates and then trying to run through everything again and really test yourself and test your memory and test your nerves it's all that part of build up to it uh, is as just as important for me as uh, actually participating in the competition. So yeah, when I was selected, I was very uh, fortunate. You know, I was selected and I was really happy. So all I could do was uh, just turn up and not let them down. <laughs> So we decided we're going to enter the World Championships and usually you get, I don't know how long, maybe eight months or so advance notice that the event's going to be on this day at this time, this place, and you start to put together teams. So um, I can't really remember exactly how we decided which people were coming along for the team, but the, the association was like a, a whole national thing. I mean, we had clubs in Carlisle up north, Isle of Wight down south, so the groups were spread all over the country and we had to try and pick a team from a set of people which were spread throughout the whole 
country that had to practice regularly because when you do a, a team pattern everybody has to do it's like a synchronized performance so everybody has to do everything together so i think the way it was really picked was probably the people that we knew were good at patterns people that competed regularly were getting gold medals nationally at patterns come together and the people also that said they had the time to commit to the practice and we did all the practice in Coventry because it's like central but people used to come up weekly from the Isle of Wight or down from Carlisle to practice and we had a team of the team pattern consisted of five people but what we did so we could practice better was each area of the country had a team of five that could perform that pattern so in Carlisle they could practice with their five in Coventry we practiced with our five Isle of Wight Milton Keynes all over the country and then you whichever five were picked knew their role because we've been practicing it in separate teams so I think the the final team there was three people from Coventry in it uh, and then there was one lad from Milton Keynes and one lad from Carlisle but uh, that was the men's team the women's team also won uh, the gold medal on the same day as well. Not really, because I'd done so many competitions, it was just, at that point, it was another competition. I wouldn't say that, isn't it? I always get nervous when I'm doing a competition, so nerves are always there, but that's part of the adrenaline, and it's always round one that's the hardest, because that's where you, you settle your nerves. Once you've done a, gone through a round of uh, a competition, you sort of settle yourself in, so the longer it goes on, for me personally, the, the better I can perform. So. I wasn't really intimidated at all, just uh, the normal competition nerves. Oh, it was good, we had a good relationship. I imagine there's a few people that didn't quite make the team and were a little bit miffed that they weren't in the team, but uh, it was good. We, we went to, because the event was run by uh, Puma, it was a Puma World Championships, and the, the Puma had their own team and they'd been world champions for at least the last couple of years. So we went, they got silver the day that we, we won the gold, so it was nice to go to their event and beat them. We all take slightly different roles, I think, because um, people who... depends on how we form, uh, formulate, for, formulate the uh, group pattern. We do lots of, uh, like, you know, syncing together or delayed, delayed reactions, etc. And uh, depending on what we do, how we position people needs to be... Uh, well thought, I think. So, if we are, if you are positioned at either end of a formation, then I think you could stand out a little bit more than the others if you make a more mis slight mistake. But if you are in the middle, it's probably uh, more to do with how you can keep in sync with everybody else rather than uh, uh, being a kind of like a, taking a lead role in starting something. Shock, really, more like. Has it really happened? You know, it's, it's, uh, have I really done that? Because you sort of go when you enter a competition, you sort of you're doing your your um, your thing. You go through rounds, so you start off. Everybody starts off together at the same point, and then if you happen to win a round, you go through to the next round, and you sort of you're wondering along how, how many more rounds are there because you, you you really you can only look around and sort of guess how many people are, are entered in that event. So you get through, and you sort of even when you get to the semi-finals. Sometimes they don't tell you this is the semi-final. You just you just do that, and then you go through to the final, and you're working it out in your head that there's there can't be many people left because I've seen them, I've seen them, I've seen them. So when you actually win it, and that's it, it's a sort of a oh, is that <laughs> is that the end sort of thing until they <coughs> until they then pre present the uh, trophies and and medals. Oh, uh, so I like oh, we did it. <laughs> yeah, more more disbelief really, but um, I was glad. Uh, we didn't mess up, <laughs> but it's uh, it's really you know our effort uh, paid off, and uh, some of the team members travelled from quite far away to practice every week. So uh, yeah, it was really yeah, I was glad. Uh, personally, you know I didn't mess up, <laughs> and then as a group we did it really well, and it was uh, something for those uh, people who travelled very far. Uh, for them to really appreciate what they achieved. Uh, yeah, I'd definitely say more respect, but I think it's more the um, you know, the experience that I've done now. I can pass over to others and help them by coaching them to a to a good level. Uh, we're now joined the uh, ITF Union, which is a 
a real big group worldwide, not just in the UK, it's a worldwide thing, ITF Union, and they've just come back from their World Championships in Buenos Aires and Argentina, where they've done really, really well. Uh, unfortunately for some of our students, we joined a little bit late, otherwise some of our guys would have hopefully been on that national team going to Argentina, but we've got the um, European Championships in Madrid coming up, and we hope to have quite a few of our members taking part in that, including uh, my one of my sons as well that's uh, part of the national team. Uh, I wouldn't say it's changed me personally, it was a nice achievement obviously. I won it two years running and then the third year, a little bit disappointing that I only got silver. <laughs> I really wanted to get three in a row, but uh, you know, that's, to win two is obviously amazing. I think how other people may look at it is probably more, you know, is, is a little bit different, especially for advertising purposes. You know, if you run a school and you can say former world champion, then that also looks good. But lots of people sort of respect you a little bit more. You go to competitions and they know if you win a world, if you win a national competition, that's good because you quite often get really good people at national competitions. But you go to a world championships, you know that everybody's going to be there. You know, you can go to national championships and go for a whole year probably and not come up against some of the better people because of the the way that the system works but you go to world championships you've got to you've got to you've got to come up against the best don't think so <laughs> i'm uh like competition is a uh, good fun to go and i like competing but what i win or what i lose i don't really mind personally it's uh every time i step into the ring here in practice or in competition uh, what I take away or what I feel is how I did on that moment so even in practice if I spar against somebody and I thought I didn't do very well and then uh, everything I did in the past doesn't really matter to me <laughs> I don't do it myself either uh, it's just um, stretching regularly but little little and often is uh, very good it goes really far and uh, even if you're not stretching if you just keep your joints moving in a way you don't normally move so not just stop talking about just you know walking or getting up the chair and stuff is doing a leg raise or hip circles etc that kind of movements really helps to keep you supple oh yeah i do yeah absolutely uh, especially if you uh, uh, have the inclination to enjoy some action films <laughs> and uh, wants to know how to punch and kick then uh, definitely Taekwondo is a great sport to learn or martial arts as well and uh, there is a self-defense aspect to it as well which uh, if you want to take really far into that there is an avenue to go but um, it's a really good introduction to all the uh, aspects of what martial arts can offer you uh, and I definitely I'd recommend Taekwondo uh, Taekwondo has something for everybody so Within the classes that we do, we have people that want to become world champions that really want to train hard. We have other people that train for a hobby, to keep fit, to meet new people, whatever, to improve flexibility, improve confidence, for lots of different things. So when we, when we run our normal classes, they, they cater for, for everybody in all walks of life. And then we have certain other classes where they're dedicated for people that want to progress further, like our squad training and stuff like that. But I know people that run classes for 60 year old plus you know separate classes or women's only classes and we do tiny little preschool classes where kids just learn about balance and coordination and, and things like that so i think within the the structure of taekwondo there is something for everybody everybody can take uh, an aspect and improve it in taekwondo